We are live. Welcome to Hack Shack Studios. Woohoo! We got stuff. You hear this? That's stuff. This is stuff. And we will be showing it to you. Uh, we're going to have uh, Pamela in this stream. And it's, it's going to be a short one. We just want to show off some stuff. Right? We're going to show off some stuff. Some stuff. We pa got stuff. Pamela's going to show her stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to see that. Uh, yes, and we will move forward once we get a sign of life. This is kind of an impromptu thing. I usually don't do shows on Saturday. I usually try to take the weekends off to bring some sanity to my life. And uh, we do. We have a sign of life. We have I borrow ideas. Just don't steal them. Just borrow them and then return them once you're done. Yo, Art, how are you doing? I am doing fine. We have Linkovich. I always say I had a shop teacher named Linkovich. Can you do that thing where you got your finger like? Ch Remember that thing that they would do with your thumb? They uh -huh. do with your thumb, and then it'd be like your finger was missing. I don't. I don't remember. Yeah, I could never do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I could do. Was it like this? Like. <laughs> no, it looked like it. It was so, it was something like this. It was like your thumb, and you'd like pull it off, like that was the joke. And he used to do that all the time. He goes, "Don't be like me and lose a finger." So that's what he would, when he would teach shop uh, safety. Mm -hmm. So uh, hell, Linkovich, what's up? We have only sixty four. Hell, brethren, hell, hell. Uh, Comics Gate is rocking it, man. Uh, it's. Jeez, man, these numbers are crazy. We got some backers the last couple of days too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So should we thank them? Well, of course. Okay. There's always the gratitude there. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Merciful fate. Uh, we got Victor Thomas. Hey, Victor, what's up? You know it's a party when Victor Thomas shows up. And we have Shadowhawk. Um, Artie Bear, Hell CG. Hell, Pammy Bear. <laughs> he loves you. That's so cute. Isn't that cool to be loved? Yeah. I love it because Amanda has friends that call me Mama Bear. And it always makes me feel good, you know, when I see Mason or Jeremiah or any of her friends. And they go, Mama T-Bear. Yeah, okay. It always makes me feel good. Okay, so see if you guys can guess what this sound is. This is just a few of them. Yes. And then this sound right here, I should hold it up to the – oh, I don't, I don't have my uh, microphone. I hope everybody can hear me good. I didn't swing it around. This is just kind of – we just got these in, so uh, – We got excited. Yeah, we got excited. <laughs> we wanted to show them off to you guys. So this is – okay. Uh -oh. Oh, I'm dropping so them all over. This is the sound of the other thing, and then this is the sound. So this is what we're <laughs> this is what we're going to be showing off to you guys. I'm so excited I can barely talk. Um, yeah, they're very very cool. And I oh wait, uh, um, what is this? Uh, Hell, Doug and the Chrono Mechanics. I th yes. I think Linkovich knows where this is going. I think he knows where this is going. Ah ha. Guitar picks? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. 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 Is Chrono still live? Hell yeah, it is, Alan. Go back yourself a book. Yeah, get get yourself the ultimate package, and you'll get one of everything. And you'll get all these things that, that make these sounds. So things that make these sounds right here. <laughs> what was that? What? Remember... <laughs> Remember, like, when you were a kid, there, it was like, what was that game where you'd have to guess, like, what the sounds were? There was some kind of game like that, wasn't there? Like, I don't know. What is that? Maybe. And then what is this? <laughs> uh, yes, it is still live, Alan. So uh, the link is in the description. So uh, click on the link and go check out the site. Yeah, that's some cool shit. Um, <laughs> I hope they weren't kidney stones. You want to <laughs> You want to tell your kidney stone story real oh, quick? No, no, no. No, people like human interest no, stuff. No, no. Pain, you don't want to hear about that. Well, the funny thing about the kidney stone thing is before you even fully knew what it was, we took, we took our daughter on a graduation vacation to Florida. We went to the, the Disney properties, and we 
oh my gosh, it was all bells and whistles, right? We're gonna have a great old, great old time, right? Oh yeah. And so then it started with kind of like, I need to use the restroom, right? And then it came Constantly. like, and then it was like, I need to use the restroom like five minutes later. If then you guys ever go to Florida Disney parks, if you need to know where the restrooms are, just ask me. She knows where they all are, and so do we. Because, like, like uh, my daughter or our daughter, uh, Amanda and I, were just like, okay, Mom, there's the restroom right over there in case you need it. So so we didn't know what was going on, really. It was just that you kind of had some pain. Like, some, un it was more un you were uncomfortable and that you had to use the restroom quite a bit. Right. right. And the doctors before we left just thought I had a, a you know, a kidney infection. A yeah, infection. they they weren't. Yeah, they weren't saying like kidney stones. No. And so then I ended up getting some kind of flu. <laughs> yes. like, and Amanda I, was sick. I was vomiting, <laughs> and then and then uh, Amanda <laughs> was sick as well. And we all kind of had different days. Like one day one was good and then the other two weren't and it just like shifted around i just remember the last day um i think the only the only thing i ate the whole day was a banana i spent eight dollars on a banana um at disney world <laughs> and i think i only ate half of it and i don't even remember this amanda said you're just kind of so fed up you're waiting in line at the jungle cruise and you just kind of ate it and then you're just like uh, you're just like dozing off and then you just like threw it over your shoulder <laughs> You just threw the banana peel over your shoulder. Um, yeah, it was it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Uh, wait, wait, unqualified comics. Unqualified? I always think I'm unqualified to do comic books, but I should get over that. I've been doing it for a while. Um, Shadowhawk, let's see. Oh, hell yeah. I play bass, uh, but my wife plays guitar. Old school. No pick. Hmm. Well, if you back the book, you might get uh, get something that'll help out in that department. Um, Late Kick One says, "I am looking forward to backing Black and White." Yes. Oh, ooh, I could show that off too. Should I do that real quick? Yeah. You got to tease these things, Pamela. Where, do you, where is it? It's um, it's Screen Share. Oh. Yeah, because I was working on it this morning. Let me see Screen Share. I'm gonna need to move this thing that makes that sound. I can't say it yet. Screen share, click, click, click. Ooh, that's extra large. Yes, this is the piece of artwork that we will be using for the volume one second chance black and white campaign. So this will be a print. And then we were thinking about possibly uh, since it was such a hit with Chrono, We'll do it as a trading card as well. So the trading card will come with the book. So yeah, this is Reed Blackett, aka Black, you know, blasting the crap out of this uh, this bot and yanking his arm off. So I've been working on this hand. Look at this hand. Yeah. I drew that, Pamela, I drew that digitally. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I kind of work back and forth between like a sketch. A hand drawn sketch, and then I scan it in, and then I work digitally um, and change and augment. It's just so much easier to do that. And if you want to see, I think where the gun started, I still have it in layers. Here we go. There's where the gun started. There's where it's at now. So you can kind of see how things change and progress digitally. Wow, you're getting it behind the scenes. There we go. Beginning, end, beginning, end. It's actually more brutal, too, because he's right in that row body. It's like, ah, take that. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm going to be working on this over the weekend, putting it together. I'm going to probably after this show, I'm going to check this over one last time, sign off on it, and then I'm going to print it out as a blue line and start doing my finished run on it. So, yeah, if you guys haven't signed up for the pre-launch, please do so. It's also in the description. So Black and White Volume 1, Second Chance. We are going to uh, give you a second chance at buying Volume 1 and picking it up because there were a lot of people, right? We got a lot of emails and people yes. DMing. Yeah. yeah. 
and asking where they can get a copy. So we were going to start selling them just like uh, like PayPal and stuff like that, but we thought, well, there were so many of them, we should just do another campaign, right? You're nodding your head. Yes. <laughs> uh, you want to get in front of the camera, then you can you can nod your head. No, that's all right. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So um, let me go back to the chat. Back, back, back to the chat. Are you using Windsor Newton uh, series brushes? And oh, they're they're really really good. I like them a lot. So if you can get your your hands on one, do so. They're a little expensive. I use the number two. Some people use ones and threes. Ones don't hold enough ink and threes seven. too much. Series seven, but number two, size oh. number two. Oh. Yeah. Pamela's clarifying. Look at she knows all the tools because she orders the tools for us. For the studio here, Art, ask your wife what is more painful, giving birth or a kidney stone? That is a good question, Jax. Uh, Are they on par? <laughs> Well, because I had to have a C-section, I'm not really, I didn't do the whole thing with giving birth. Um, but I can tell you a kidney stone, it was one of the most painful things. And and I, it was so funny, that whole thing, because I came up to Art and I said, Art, I, I have to go to the emergency room. And he goes, there's nothing wrong with you. And I'm like, my whole back, this is, there's something wrong. So I get in the car and I drive myself to the emergency room. And on the way, a friend of mine calls and she goes, what are you doing? And I said, I'm driving myself to the emergency room. What are you doing? And uh, so by the time I got there, I mean, I was in so much pain. They took me right in. I couldn't stop moving. I have heard the term writhe. She didn't want to talk about this, but here we go. But it that's what you do. That's how bad the pain is. Yeah, you you were you were horribly in pain. And I, I went up to the doctors. I was like, you gotta give her something. You gotta give her something for this. I, it was amazing how long it took. Like they didn't want to give you any morphine or any painkiller until they were absolutely sure. You were yeah. passing a kidney stone. It's like, I understand, but really, painkiller, how how much interaction? I mean, there's usually no interaction. Like, they can give you painkillers and not, like, worry about, like, side effects, right? I mean, it's morphine. Well, they remember, they gave the morphine, and it did nothing. And then, remember, they gave me something else that you said they said was eight times stronger it was a type of morphine did they they did they give you pills first and then they gave you a no, drip or something it right? was a, a drip right yeah it was crazy you guys like it is it is really really painful and uh yeah it was insane yeah i hope no one has to see a loved one go through that kind of pain if you guys ever have listened to um william shatner when he has done talk shows, he was, he, I remember one that, where he was in New York <laughs> and he, he was passing a kidney stone and they took him to the emergency room and he said he was laying there screaming and he said, but in my head, I was thinking, you can't scream. You're Captain Kirk. Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be a tough guy. <laughs> Yeah, you know, unqualified comic says kidney stones are absolute misery. I chug vinegar with a ton of water once a week just so I never have to experience that again. Isn't that weird? Like when you experience pain like that, you just become you, remember. you become crazy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, oh, title 10. Wow, a lot of kidney. Uh, my first kidney stone, I was fine. One second. Yes. The next, my body is a like, yeah, my will. Yes. Brought me to the floor mighty fast. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy. So uh the California health system is trash. <laughs> yeah, everything in California is trash. Uh, my wife and I have been uh been looking at other homes in other places that are less trashy <laughs> <laughs> and where money goes a lot further. Hell. 
Uh, I've kidded before, but it's actually fact. We could live like kings and queens <laughs> in it, other it, places. But just California has changed. When I moved here in the 70s, it was awesome. Cal it, it, people were friendly. It, it, it was just a, a great place to live. Now it's oppressive. There's bums everywhere. Like, remember when we first moved here? There was like, it was like Mayberry where you ha we had the resident bum, right? There was like one, one, guy, one guy and everybody loved him. We all like fed him and stuff like that. It's like, hey, bum. Like we'd wave to him and stuff. Um, he Because he'd be on the side of the Green Ooh. River over here. And um, it was fine. Now they're like roaming the street. They're, they're walking against the lights. So you have to be careful not to run them down on the road. It's absurd. They break out windows. Yeah, have, they're they're vandalized in the area too now. I have actually seen Orange County police come. They pull off in, onto our area, and they open up their door. They they let two or three homeless people out, uncuff them, and send them off in our area. That's what they're doing now. Yeah, yeah. So gaming or what trademark, always trademark, you guys. Gaming is ahead of the game here. So, and that's a pun. Uh, for the second chance uh, for Black and White campaign, will it include a poster? Yeah, that's what that's going to be. That artwork that I showed, I hope you were in earlier because I just showed it. Uh, it's going to be 11 by 17 print. And... Um, it's gonna, it's gonna, I don't know, I think lithographs are a little harder. So it's it's gonna be a high-end print though. So it's gonna print up real nice. And then we're gonna have a nice border around it. It'll have the logo on the bottom and then I'll sign um, the bottom part of it. And uh, I'm gonna try to finish that up this weekend. So I'll probably be posting it around as well as soon as we get out of here. So, uh, oh, uh, Flea California, Eric Weathers says, and go check out Eric Weathers, um, Battle Brick Road, it is live right now on Indiegogo. It is kicking much ass. Comics Gate is uh, triumphant. Uh, so, of course, once you, you know, check out Chrono first, back that, <laughs> then go over to Eric Weathers and back Battle Brick Road. Oh, and then we have, uh, yeah, Texas. There's, there's a couple places in Texas I really like. And, yeah, I think Zach lives in Texas. So, yeah, that, that's definitely on the schedule as well. That's, that's on the list. So Zach has Golma as well, so another comic skate book that is doing well. So uh, it's The Walking Dead. Yeah, it's kind of like The Walking Dead out here. Yeah, they look like it. And we just, what? We never had a crash like this before, but we had two in the last couple of months. Yeah. Like somebody just okay. drove their car into like one of the, uh, the condo complex. Uh, we saw it this morning. Uh, this area is going to hell quickly. Quickly, Hell Eric. Yes, Hell Eric. Um, uh, Eric Weather says, yes, back Chrono, then Battle Brick Road. <laughs> or, you know what? If you're going to do both, I'm not going to say you have to go in that order, but you could go in that order. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have Zade Comics, man. It's an all star. It's an all star list of people. Uh, this is just going to be like a little show we were going to do, but we got quite a, quite a, uh, you know, Turnout. Yeah. Turnout. Uh, oh, uh, Zach put a link to Battlebrook Road. Very cool. And Zach, you should put a link to Goma as well. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Okay, should we like, should, which one should we do first, Pamela? Which buttons? The ones that make this sound? Yes. Or the ones that make this sound? No, but you're dropping them. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. These things are so cool, you guys. Okay, so. Here we go. This is the big reveal. Are you guys sitting down? This is just like you just did like a big dipping of buttons downstairs, yeah, right? Yeah. So I get just it. Brought some up. Yeah, we got a huge. Oh my gosh, look at these things. We got like a huge. We just got these in the other day. <laughs> I'm trying to hold them up. <laughs> what are you doing? I tried to show them off. <laughs> So yeah, here we go. These these are the wait, I'm going upside down here. Ooh, put that in and look like I have three hands. You gotta get in front of the camera. Well, I don't know where you're you're right over there, you're reverse of the image. Oh. There you go. There we go. Okay, now I got three hands. 
So these are the team, <laughs> the team 9.2 of Sector 7 buttons. Let me see if I can get one of them in for a close-up. These things came out so cool. There's a little reflection on them. But yeah, so this is one of the stretch goals. So we're starting to get manufacturing done for Chrono Mechanics. And the book is done. We're just waiting for a couple pages from our great uh, letter, not, I'm sorry, Eric, we betrayed you, uh, Jeff Eckleberry. So Jeff Eckleberry um, is lettering the book and we're waiting for the last batch of pages from him. And once we get those done, we get them all okayed. Then we are off to the printers and we have a printer all lined up and they're giving us a tentative date of 50 days from the time they get the file, 50 days. So that's kind of an ETA on the book. So we always try to be transparent, let you guys see what's going on. And so now you know what's making this sound right here, this sound. All right. So we, well, we have like a thousand of those, right? Yes. So we have, oh my gosh. These and things, a thousand of these. These things are so freaking cool. I don't know how to, I can't really show them off. Like, you don't have to. I know, but they're like hands full. Like, look, at, look at Doug. Look at Doug on the guitar. The guitar pick. Look at that. That's so freaking awesome. This is the lucky pick, you guys. So when you read the comic, you will see that uh, the lucky pick is kind of, it's, it's a character in the book. It's actually a character. And you're asking yourself, well, how? How could a guitar pick be a character? You're just going to have to read the book and find out. You should put up that one page where he loses it. I don't know. You want me to show that off? You guys want to see that? Here we go. This is a thousand guitar picks, and there's like a thousand on the ground that I spilled. <laughs> I spilled it. Watch this. Okay. Mwa ha 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 ha. <laughs> guitar picks everywhere. Uh, my wife's looking at me like, what the hell? What the hell's wrong with you? Yeah, it's like throwing money up and then. I, I look at you like that quite often. Oh, I hate you. I hate you, but I love you. So what page is that? Look up the page and we'll show it off. Hand me your book. Okay. Because I don't want to show them too many pages. So, oh, shoot. We got to get the letter page, though. How do we do that? I don't know how we do that. <laughs> do we have to show the letter page? Yes. Hey, Amanda, come in here. Help me get a letter page. Yeah. This is all, all in the family. Uh, it's page live 24. 24. Okay, so you know how. Okay, so I, I can go to Photoshop and then I can grab it because it's it's on the it's on it's not on the desktop or it is on the desktop, but I don't know how to get them. You open your desktop. I know, but it's it, it's a different file. It's a zip file or something. I don't know how to download. Oh, I don't those. know how to open zip files. See, it's right here. What page did you say it was? Twenty four. Twenty four. Maybe. Right. Maybe. That I can... says thirty five, not twenty four. I know, but it's 1 through 35. Oh, then click the page you want. You said 24? Yeah. Maybe I can do this. Maybe I can do this. Wait a minute. Oh, shoot. It's not colored, though. Oh, my gosh. Let me close this. Mm -hmm. So this, this is what happens when you do impromptu. In, impromptu. All right. Good luck. Oh, she's she's. She's scurrying She's away. Scurrying away. Don't put me to work. I don't want to. She doesn't want to work. Earn your keep. No. <laughs> Wait a minute. I just opened a black and white file. What? Open desktop. One through fifty-four. One through forty-five. It should be in the one through forty-five. Let's see. Please be here because this is going to be embarrassing if I can't find it. Ah, uh, ha, ha, yes. Okay, open. So where did it open to? Ah, yes. Eureka. All right. Or as you always say, Eureka. 
Why do you share? You share <laughs> you share too much crap. Uh, well, when when you have me come in here. You know what everybody's gonna be doing right now? They're gonna be writing urethra in the um <laughs> in the chat. Yeah, urethra. And then what do I say too? I say urethra Franklin. Yes. <laughs> All right, so um this is well, this is gonna be a little bit of a spoiler alert, right? Are you sure you want to do this? Well, I should after all this work, right? Yes. Okay. So she, Pamela, the co-writer on this book, is giving permission for me to show off this page. Well, so, it's got the pick. So here we go. Well, it doesn't show off the pick. But it talks. All, all right. Yeah, so I'll zoom it in so you can read this. So this is how transparent we are, you guys. We're actually showing off pages. Okay, so twang, twang, that's obviously a guitar sound. So then Doug is sitting there all alone in the erect uh, chrono time ship. And he's like, what's going on with this guitar? It's beautiful, really well made. I love the feel, but it just doesn't sound right. Something's missing. I know. It needs the one thing that can make my guitar sing. The one thing that has always brought me good luck. The one thing I've never been separated from. What? My lucky guitar pick is gone. <laughs> uh, he's not just screaming. He always screams on uh, in tune and uh, like a true rocker. So yeah, so this is uh, this is the page that uh reveals what well, what is it it doesn't reveal the guitar pick it reveals the dilemma of the guitar pick <laughs> so you could just imagine like what the hell is he going to do now his guitar pick's gone has this now become a quest to get his guitar pick is that where this is going should we tell them Oh, I don't, I don't know. No, no, maybe not. Well, we'll leave that for yeah. the book. Yeah, so this is page 24, you guys. Look at how amazing this is coming out. Uh, the colors by uh, Priya Pillai, uh, just brilliant. The lettering um, by Jeff Eckleberry, who letters, he lettered the uh, black and white book, and he's just, he's kind of, well, he is part of Hack Shack Studios. I've known him for 20 years. And he lettered Chrono. Yeah, the original Chrono yeah. as well. Yeah. So each one of the characters have a different font. So this is the Doug font. So yeah, uh, you can see like the layout's pretty unconventional. And it's just a lot of fun. It's just a lot of fun, you guys. I love the empty pocket. Yeah, he's pulling out his pocket just so you guys can see. He's doing that just for the viewer. <laughs> uh yeah so so this is page 24 you guys you got a little preview i wasn't i wasn't planning on doing that today and if you guys didn't see this is the layout um this is going to be the big piece of artwork for uh black and white volume one um second chance campaign which is going to launch hopefully at the end of this week so this will be made into a uh a special edition poster and then we will make this into trading cards. So everybody that backs a book will get this in form of a trading card, absolutely free. Well, with the order. I thought it was the end of the month. This is. Not Did I say the end of this month? No, you said the end of this week. Oh yeah, I thank you. The end of the month. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, not the end of this week. The end of the month. So yeah, so look forward to that. And I'll probably be inking this on this YouTube channel as well. So you'll see it all come together. Um, that's the fun part of doing all these things is showing all this stuff off, sharing with you guys. So, oh, we got Spirits Car, one of my favorite, my new favorite, right, right up there with I Borrow Ideas and Leg Kick One. It used to, it used to be uh, Thunder Buns until now he's a friend, so we don't have to. <laughs> We don't have to say. See what happens to you guys when you're in the chat and we like you? We end up doing shows with you. Uh, oh, Gaming or Y says, I could use a new guitar pick. Well, hells yeah, here you go. Here's your new guitar pick, the lucky pick. I should hold it this way. And it's cool. You can't see it, but it's, um, it's kind of multicolored. 
And some of the pieces are like, they're kind of metallic. So how many different, there's like three or four different shades of green in here. So it's not just a straight green. It's actually kind of textured and has multiple colors in it. So it's pretty darn cool. So you guys, if you back back or have backed a Corona Mechanics book, um, all the stretch goals, you will get absolutely free. And then this is one of the cool stretch goal items. This is the lucky pick. This is the thing I really wanted to see made. So I'm really, really excited about it. And it came out so amazing. Look at this thing. I wish I could. It's got a glare on it, though. It's a little out of focus. Well, I hope they can see that it's Doug with the guitar over his shoulder. Yeah, it's a cool shot of Doug. And then, um, of course, we got the uh, the team 9.2 of Sector 7 buttons, which are very cool. And right now we have this same the same artwork that if we can get to 45k we just posted that yesterday right yes yeah. the new stretch goal and it's a patch so if you guys haven't seen uh go to the um the chrono mechanics site click the link is in the description and if you scroll down or if you just check the updates because the updates has the uh, trading card in it too uh, we have the trading card artwork done by james dean anderson and we have the new stretch goal which is the patch so it's going to be an embroidered patch, and it's going to be a little bit bigger than the ones we did for black and white because um, there's a lot of detail in there, and we want to make sure that it all gets gets uh, gets its, uh, I don't know, the detail comes shows through. Shows up. Yeah, shows yeah. up. Yeah. Um, I miss art. Wait. I Have I missed art playing the drums ever? I tried to do that one stream, and it's really loud. It kind of, like... It just, it bounces all over the place and the sound is really, it's really horrible. But maybe I can show, I can show you this. Let me see if I can find them. I can show you this just to show. I'm legit, man. Only legit drummers can do this. And I can do this for hours and hours and hours. I can do it with this hand too, but I'll hit the microphone. So yeah, yeah, so so very, very cool. Pamela, do you want to leave them with anything? Uh, a thank you, a parting shot, a pearl of wisdom, perhaps? <laughs> My pearls of wisdom? Uh, no, I do want to thank everyone. Um, it, you guys are like family um, to us, and it it it's so nice, and I love the fact that comics are still being made, they're still getting out there, and that people are going, yeah, we love this stuff, and we will support this. It's just an awesome community that I, I don't even know how to describe, you know, how it makes me feel, because as a kid, I have I loved comics then, and I still love comics. Yeah, these things are emotional. You guys don't understand when you, when you do these these uh, these crowdfund Indiegogo and you create your own IPs and you put blood, sweat, and tears in these things. Uh, it's a part of you, man. So it's not just a comic book. It's 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 part of you. It really really is. So you get emotional about it. Like it it really is. It's passion. And I'll tell you. And, and Pamela will back me up. I've done you know comics for a long, long time, but the happiest I've been is the last couple of years, um, being able to bring this um, to you guys live on YouTube, doing these campaigns, sharing these uh, these IPs, these books. Um, it's just it's like a dream come true. It's it really is, and it's hard. Like you you were trying, it's hard to put into words. It really is because it's more it's more emotion than it is um, logic or you know. Well, you've always said that comics is they are such there's nothing else like a comic you you one time explained how the inked line and and it was one of the reasons you were so proud to be an inker because you used to say that there's not another form out there that that is like a comic book and it's it, that people still in this day and age of, of, you know, being able to get games at the drop of a hat and, and all this, 
just to be able to know that people still care about this. Yeah. That they still want a good story and good art that they can get into. It, it's awesome. They're craving it. They're yeah, craving it. Awesome. They're absolutely craving it. And Marvel and DC for on some level is, but but Marvel is not. And DC is course correct, correcting right now. So lucky, well, it's not lucky, but that this pandemic and some other things have happened because I think that DC is is definitely course correcting where a lot of other companies are just doubling down um and they're they're trying to do good stories and good comics but yeah the only place that ink inking as an art form still exists in the culture is in comic books so it's one of the very things that define comics as an art form is ink um there just isn't anymore. Uh, you don't, there's, there's, there just isn't inkers out there. There used to be like advertising art would be inked because if it was in a newspaper, it would, it would replicate cheaply and accurately. So they didn't use a lot of photographs and stuff. They used uh, art, art representation. So it, they would be in pen and ink or brush and ink. So a lot of advertising and things were all done that way, but it doesn't exist anymore. So really the only the only thing, the only place inking exists is in this in this industry, in comic books. And uh, there's three things that to me define a comic book is uh, sequential art, which is borders, you know, uh, panel artwork, balloons and inking. So those three things uh, are what to me defines a comic book. And, and inking is essential. And the reason I know this is fact is because when Madison Avenue uh, advertising companies get uh, jobs where they have to do uh, comic book art, where they have to replicate it, it's always inked. It's always inked. It's never like, you know, Photoshop or digital or painted. It's always inked. So that's how come I know that um, the ink plays a huge part in comic books. So, um, oh, we have Zach saying uh, he's going to shred when he gets his guitar pick. <laughs> what is it like? I got to turn it around this way so you can see that. Yeah, so so very good, you guys. So, so uh, we are going to be uh, shipping this book out soon to the printer. And uh, Pamela is putting together uh, all these... Uh, She's talking with vendors. She's um, making deals right now to get manufacturing done. So a lot of the stretch goal stuff is either being manufactured or is going to go out relatively soon. And we are getting stuff back. So we got the we got the buttons and we have the guitar picks. And I, I somebody in the chat was saying, make it rain guitar picks. Okay, well, let's do this. I'm going to make it rain one more time. This will be the parting shot. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to make a mess. <laughs> we just made it rain guitar picks. So yeah, look at this thing. God, it's so cool. Wow. All right, you guys. Thank you so very much for making this dream a reality. Chrono Mechanics is still in demand. Like I said, in the description, click on it. Go check it out. Um, we do have a new stretch goal, which is the embroidered patch, the Team 9.2 of Sector 7 patch. It's an iron-on, too. Yeah, it's iron-on. So it'll look cool on your bomber jackets, on your backpack, stuff like that. And we're going to do the Comic Skate Con soon. So I want to see, I want to see uh, chrono patches on people. I want to see black and white patches on people. And we, uh, we've been trying to get a hold of Crypto Fashion because we want to do some, some T-shirts as well. And we want to get those out in time so you guys can wear your Chrono T-shirts, your Hack Jack Studios T-shirts, your black and white T-shirts to the show. And uh, I'm going to look into seeing how much a, a T-shirt launcher is because I'm just going to shoot those 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 T-shirts out. I was told that they don't they don't break apart; they stay like bound up, I guess, when you shoot them. So I don't know because my initial idea was I was going to shoot them across the convention and I was hoping they'd open up like a parachute and they'd float down. But if they come down, they're going to be a projectile and it might hurt people. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure exactly how much I can do with the t-shirt launcher. Cause um, 
I don't know how much force, how much, you know, like impact those things. I can't shoot them at people. So I'll just have to shoot them up. I'll figure it out. I'll figure out how to make it all work, but I'm going to look into that as well. So I hope they let me on the plane with a uh, t-shirt launcher and they don't take that as a, uh, as some kind of weapon. Uh, we have uh, watchman for you says miss, Mrs. T bear has jokes. Oh, oh, she, oh, she has jokes. And you know what? They're usually at my expense. So she loves to come out here and uh, she can vent in the form of a joke, her frustration towards me. Ah, uh, the pick of destiny, uh, the pick of destiny. Don't even get me started, man. They ripped us off. That's all I had to say. Um, oh, we got Peter Sumetti agreed, agreed to what? Oh, uh, looks going to look totally badass. Man, this is a celebrity-filled um, chat. Yeah, we got Peter Sametti. We got uh, we got Zade Comics. We got Eric Weathers. I think we got, yeah, we got Zach Bradley. Oh, thank you, Zach. That's very cool. Very, very cool. So, uh, hey, buddy. Hey, bud. <laughs> Let's party. What was that from? Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Yeah, I'm old. I need about five picks. Yeah, you know what? I was I was thinking about that because if you use the guitar picks, they actually they're like drumsticks. Um, you actually just shred these things. Pamela, if you've ever seen like a guitar player, because especially like you can do this thing on the strings, like and it, it'll leave a wedge, like it'll it'll oh eat into it'll the eat into the guitar pick, and then it'll actually wear um, the tip off as well. So guitar players usually are going through guitar picks like crazy. Um, they came out great. Thank you, Sky. Gonna look totally badass. Thank you, Peter. Thank you so much, man. So much support for these Comics Gate books. It's awesome. Awesome. I want to see Cecil Mud wrestle. What? <laughs> I want to see Cecil Mud wrestling Donald Delay at the con. Is this gonna be a thing? <laughs> If so, they should sell tickets now because they're going to make a freaking killing. Uh, Eric says, can't wait. Yeah, go check out uh, Battle Brick Road 2. It's a great concept, great guy. Um, Eric is, every time I see him pencil something, he's getting better and better, man. You're getting to see, like, talent, actually. You're getting to see old veterans like me, but you're also getting to see um, guys, you know, like, build up their um, – their chops live on these shows as well, which is pretty cool. Like Donald delay is gone from zero to like a million in a short, short period of time. That guy's compositions. I envy them just killer. What is this? The killer puck. Uh, you have to tell us the, how the pick of destiny did that art. Do, do you want to chime in here? You want to tell the story? No, go ahead. Well, you can chime in because I, I know it, I know it angers you too. Uh, wait, I got to shoot T-shirts out of the crowd. That's what I want to do, but I don't want to hurt anybody. <laughs> That's the goal, man. Uh, okay, so what we did is when um, we we were, and I think we still are represented by Circle of Confusion, and so we had them look into partnering. So at one time we had a deal with, with Warner brothers with, it was kids WB, right? It wasn't cartoon network. Right. right. And so, um, uh, my partner and I, and Pamela, uh, Pamela likes, you don't, you're not a big Jack black fan. Right. But you're, I, yeah. there are some things that he does. That That's pretty cool. Right. Did. School of rock. I thought he was I really like school of rock. Yeah. But- and I liked him putting on his stretchy pants. That was the only good line in the whole movie. Yeah. But, yeah. but anyways, like the studio, we were big fans and we were big Tenacious D fans. Like the guys in the studio at Hack Shack Studios, we were going to those Tenacious D shows before they became big. Like they were dressing like Spider-Man. They were doing like all kinds of just crazy shit at like the small nightclubs and stuff. And this is before Jack Black was anything. I think they were on what the hell was that show? Um, I can't remember. It was it was a, uh, like a, a skit comedy show uh, with uh, Odenkirk and what's the the other guy with the glasses? He does a lot of voiceover work. Is he the one that did that show where he pretended to be uh, 
mentally challenged so he didn't have to work and he'd go chicken pot chicken pot chicken pot pot yeah what is that actor's name he was also in um in was not modern family what was that show called with it was on fox uh arrested development he he was on that God, i can't um it'll come to me hopefully you guys will help out the man yeah yeah uh was it the Mr. Man Show? It was something like that. What the hell? It was, oh, it was just called Mr. Show. Thank you, Title 10. It was just called Mr. Uh, show. And so, um, yeah, they, they did these shticks. And so Tenacious D, those guys got their start. David Cross. Thank you, Peter Samedi. David Cross. That's the chicken pot pie yeah, guy. Chicken pot pie. Yeah. And that show was called uh, News Radio. Was no, it called News it, Radio? No, it was just Shoot Me. Just shoot me. Okay. Yeah. So it was just shoot me. And so, um, yeah, so we, we like those guys. And so this is before holding out for a hero was effed out. You guys, we were like, we were ahead of the curve, um, on this. So contacted my agent, get a hold of Jack Black and Tenacious D because we want them to do the title, uh, credit song for the Chrono Mechanics cartoon. So, like I said, this is like I'm going to say this now, but you guys are going to go, "Oh man, people have done this thing a million times." But this was way. This is 20 years ago when we were pitching born. this. Amanda wasn't born. Chrono Mechanics was done when she was born. She oh, named that's true. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm wrong. Yeah. yeah. So, so, um, yeah. So we contacted them, and we got back from from their agent and they said thanks but no thanks so they passed on it but the pitch the chrono pitch we sent them the whole bible everything we sent to their representation so i know that they knew about lucky pick and they knew about doug and they knew about the time travel stuff they knew about the 70s rock god stuff all that is in the pitch bible and they knew it and so if you watch The Pick of Destiny, the whole story is about, you know, Guitar Pick, The Pick of Destiny. And also they did a video. They did a video. This is why I know. I know there's so many similarities. Um, they did a video that they did time travel in the video. And I don't remember what the story was in the video, but um, the, the Tenacious D guys, they go back in time. And there is a, a character named the Time Gremlin or something like that that's in that video. This is a really obscure video that they did, but it was to support the album because they put out the Pick of Destiny album and stuff. It was the soundtrack to the movie. And so, um, yeah, it's a Time Gremlin. And our chronomites were called, in the original pitch, they were called time gremlins because what they do is is anything that goes in the time stream they're like these little technovores and they'll eat anything that comes into the time stream and so that's in the pitch so there's this time gremlin or goblin or i think it's a gremlin that's in the story and it doesn't look anything like ours because they couldn't afford the you know in a budget but there is that character so i know i know those guys looked at that and got some of the ideas from that. And so I remember, remember we were, we were at the Hainers and they were like, you got to sue those guys. Well, they told us we should also sue Disney when they put out that, um, cause they had chrono. Cause when you talk to them, they had that too. And in that one movie, uh, Wreck-It Ralph. Oh, okay. The yeah. character that walks through walls, he he's an elucidator. He looks exactly like he Eugene. He talks like Eugene. And he even wears clothes that are like that was in the pitch and bottle. and he functions similarly yes. to uh, some of the earlier Chrono Mechanic stories. And also, if you look at Wreck It Ralph, he looks like Oot. <laughs> he's got the red, and he kind of looks like a caveman type of character you know he's this big caveman looking guy so there's a lot of similarities uh with wreck it ralph as well and but, they had the pitch book yeah but i remember 
talking to my agent about this. Was like, should what should we do? I think we have grounds. He said, you have grounds. He said, but just know that the Pick a Destiny movie and that soundtrack and all that, it didn't really do that well financially. So he said there really wouldn't be much money in it. So he kind of said, don't worry about it. Let's move on. And so that's what we did. So, um, but we have a, we have an interesting story to tell. Um, <laughs> I'll never watch Pick a Destiny again. It's actually a pretty fun movie. I like it. I like those guys, but there's definitely some similarities. So when you read Chrono Mechanics um, and you know the Pick a Destiny, you'll see some similarities there, definitely. Um, hey, Art and chat. What's up, man? Wow. I almost don't want to leave because... We are kicking some ass. Oh, oh, people. Yeah, it's David Cross. So it was it was Bob Odenkirk, I think, and uh, David Cross. Those were the two Mr. Show guys. Yeah, Spirits Car says, Tenacious D also ripped off a sketch from Kids in the Hall, uh, the devil bit too. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, it's in the ether, but I do think some things are more obvious than others. And I do think when it's brought to people's attention, they should actually come out and say it. There's one thing about the um, Incredibles movie, the first one that kind of upset me. And I think it upset you too, because you're a big Fantastic Four fan. Pamela loved the Fantastic Four as a kid. Um, is that when they did a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. So what was his name? Brad Bird was talking. He threw a bunch of like praise onto the, the uh, spirit, Will Eisner's spirit, but there was no talk about the Watchmen and there was no talk about the Fantastic Four. And if you think about those two ideas, that's definitely the DNA to The Incredibles. No doubt about it, but he never mentioned those, those two things. So I always wondered if it was because of legal, like he couldn't talk about them because he might be sued or... Um, he just didn't feel like he wanted to tip his hat to what came before. But I think you should always do that. You should always pay tribute where you got the ideas and um, and, and heap some praise on them. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Guitar Center. Ooh, Guitar Center sells the Pick a Destiny movie prop and a pick shape of the Pick a Destiny for real use. Ooh. They licensed the Pick of Destiny. Hmm. I didn't know that. Wow. Now I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. I was getting over it. And now I'm pissed again. <laughs> yeah. Screw those guys. And you know what else? Uh, screw, what were they called? Uh, chrono. What was that thing called? The chrono knots. Screw those guys, too. Because I know, I know that. Um, uh, what is his name? Mark um, Millar. Yeah, Mark Millar knew about it because I showed him the Chrono book. I so I know he knows about it. And shame on you, my friend. Shame on you. <laughs> I think Chrono Mechanics is a killer idea, and I I think that it's one of those things that we need to get we need to get that thing more successful so it can become because it's always like whatever's more successful gets the right history right yeah. it's it's not where it came from or what the where the idea stemmed from it's always the guy that makes the loudest uh impact on uh, the social social consciousness um what is this is open about what he rips off yeah i think if you're if you're secure in um your creativity i think you can you can heap the praise where where it belongs and at the same time, you know, you can still look good. Ooh, I like this. Pamela, you got to see this. Look what, what look what Blue Samurai Zero says. Shame, shame. Shame, yep. shame, shame on you. Naughty, naughty. Shame on you, you rip-off artist. Sketch Therapy says next he'll make a comic called Black and White. Don't, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody will hear you. We gotta, we gotta make sure that we get to profit off it. I did like EBS the other day. Oh my gosh, he makes my heart sing. Where Pamela, I don't know if I told you this, but uh, he said, he said it's fun to be able to talk to you in the in the chat at the same time. <laughs> uh, he said 
that he wasn't even interested in selling Cyberfrog to Hollywood or video games or anything like that. With the success of Comicsgate, I mean, he's over 800,000 in two months. A lot of these campaigns are 100K. I mean, Chrono Mechanics is now reaching 50K. 50K for a crowdfunding book, this, this is crazy. This is, this is unprecedented. Um, and so he was talking about just doing it himself, just crowdfunding, just taking it to the people, uh, start off small, be, be realistic about it, but start manufacturing, uh, crowdfund manufacturing, crowdfund small videos, cartoons, um, hell, eventually movies, video games. People, people crowdfund video games all the time. I had a friend that's really into video games, and he, he outlined a killer story uh, that you could do with Chrono Mechanics as far as a video game, and uh, it would be awesome. Yeah. So there, there's unlimited potential there to do all of this stuff ourselves. Just don't sell your IPs, you guys. Um, because a lot of times you'll sell these things to Hollywood and they'll just bury them. Oh, I like, do you remember Hugo, Pamela? Oh, the movie? Oh, I love that movie. That's one of those movies that doesn't get a lot of praise, but man, I, I that thing's brilliant. So Hugo was a shot with a kid hanging off uh, the hands off of a clock yeah. in the same movie, Kids Are Cinema Scene, Harold Lloyd's uh, uh, Safety Last. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, these are all nods and tributes to things that have come before. And I think, I think we should do that because none of us are an island. We get our ideas from every place possible. And so I think it's good to be aware of where you're getting those ideas and, and, and he preys on them because one of the things I had no idea until uh, I got a review um, from Judd Winnick when we were working together on Batman Outsiders for DC Comics. He did a Chrono review in the day and he said, if you like Hitchhiker's Guide, uh, you're going to love Chrono Mechanics. So I had no idea how like that it was kind of Hitchhiker's Guide like. But as soon as I knew that, then I was like, yeah, he preys on them. And then recently um, in the chat, you guys were saying it's kind of like Time Bandits. And I never realized that Time Bandits were actually kind of working class guys that work for the Almighty or whatever he was called in the story. So they were kind of like working class guys that did uh, maintenance and stuff like that for, for that guy. So they were kind of like chrono characters um but i didn't see it and it wasn't it wasn't like i was trying to hide it i just didn't see it so as soon as i did yeah i heap praise on those things and i love them uh, is this peter smetty your point out mm -hmm. so peter says rt bear half the budget for the chair movie based on my comic was crowdfunded on kickstarter years ago there you go there you go, man. Yeah, it can be done. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, you guys. Uh, Comicsgate and even Peter's talking about, you know, funding. I just think you have to be realistic about, you know, what you're crowdfunding and how you can do it on a smaller budget. Because obviously, $200 million is going to be really, really hard um, to finance. I think uh, Chrono would be hard to finance. Uh, but as a cartoon, not so much. But as a live action, I think it would be a little hard. Uh, black and white, I think would be uh, would be more realistic. I think you could um, you could crowdfund that. Uh, Hugo was phenomenal. One of Scorsese's best and underappreciated classic. I agree, yeah, man. Yeah. That movie is is brilliant, man. And you want a brilliant movie? Secondhand Lions. Yeah, that's another really really, really underrated. underrated. And and those are more like creator. Uh, like they, they feel like they're more, they're less big Hollywood productions and more like small, like almost create your own. Cause I think that secondhand lions was written and directed by the same person. And, and his, I wish I could remember the guy's name, but he actually um, wanted to direct it. They wouldn't let him direct it. The, the, um, 
the movie studios because he didn't have a resume. So he went out and I think he built a resume as a director. And then he came back. And then got to direct the movie. But and nobody wanted to make it. They were like, oh, no, nobody likes m poignant movies. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, it doesn't have obvious hook. You know, it doesn't have anything that's like really an obvious way to sell the movie. It just really is a good movie. And it's kind of nostalgic, but not really. Like, it's not like. I don't know. It's just really sincere. The movie's really, really sincere, and it delves into to life and death in a very realistic way, uh, but in a way that almost celebrates it. You know, I, I don't even want to give away the movie. You guys watch that movie. It's it's absolutely phenomenal. And the best thing, uh, I shouldn't say anything in case no one's seen it yet. There's a great reveal in the story. Um, there's a lot of flashbacks and there's, there seems like there's a bigger, like, there's no way this guy could have done this. Right. And then you see this guy as an older guy, uh, just kicking ass. It's Robert Duvall, right? Oh my God. One of my favorite actors, Robert Duvall. Talk about underrated, uh, Robert Duvall and Michael, and, Caine. and Michael Caine, their performance in this. And even what's his name from, uh, Haley Joel Osmond. Osmond. Yeah. Sarah. Just brilliant performances. And so, you see in in like in the real in the real time because it does flash back and it kind of moves around in in time and but when you see that guy in real time you see like maybe he could have done those things yeah. in his past and his age and it's 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 definitely a period piece movie so if you if you think about the time period and and the age of those characters you go Maybe he could have done these things. And then as the story progresses, you're kind of like, he did do those things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just so awesome the way it's they what, reveal. Like the 50s, early 50s? Probably, yeah, yeah. And then the cool thing is I love that the Haley Joel Osment character, when he gets older, he becomes a cartoonist. And they got, um, oh, my gosh, the, uh, the cartoonist. I'm blanking on it. Oh his. my goodness! It was the the lions. Yeah, and they show his car. I wish they would have yes. showed more in the movie because they were brilliant. I would love to have some of those drawings because they were uh, Burke Breathhead. Is that his name? Uh, Burke Breathhead um, was the artist, and they hired that guy to do the secondhand lions drawings because I guess it was made into a comic strip. So that's where the title comes from. Um, Eric Weathers says, Secondhand Lions, or what I'd like to call MGM's Wizard of Oz, Battlebrook Road today. Eric is working it. Hats off. Hats off. Yes. Um, I think I just saw him post that he's at 27K. Wait, wait, where, where it is? Uh, 27K. So that's awesome. Yeah. Congratulations, Eric. Um, it's a brilliant book. Josh Lucas. Josh Lucas. Oh, was he the older? Was he the older um, cartoonist guy? I'm not really familiar with Bloom County. Thank you. That's it. Yeah. Bloom County. And then it became something else. What was the comic strip? He did two of them. So Bloom County, I think, was the original. We have all those books. I, we got to break those out. Those things are brilliant. Um his his brushwork or whatever he's using is uh Oh, is that is that his name? Burke Berkeley? Berkeley Breathhead? Is that is that his name? Yeah, I think like he he uh he condenses it to Burke. Um but but watch the movie though. It is an awesome movie. You know what I'm gonna watch tonight? I'm gonna watch that movie. Sounds good. Yeah, let's watch it. Through the woods, Vinny Art. How you doing, brother? Man, this is an all-star cast. I want to kind of move on and start drawing my uh, my black and white, but uh, you're having fun. Yeah, we're having fun, man. So, how you doing, Vinny? Through the woods, uh, the hardcover is getting close to 35k. Wow, ships right away. So, I believe that Vinny has the book printed up. So, it's almost like you know, as soon as you order the book, he's going to start fulfilling. You know, get those books out to you. So, good to hear from you, Vinny. Uh, very cool. Love the book, Vinny. Um, yeah, uh, Comicsgate is 
kicking much ass. And if you guys didn't watch Pontificators last night, towards the end there, we do we do um, celebrate Comicsgate and a lot of these crowdfund books. Uh, this is nothing short of amazing what's happening right now. And this is nothing that DC, Marvel, the mainstreams are going to be able to compete with because um, they're corporate and we are, we are character. We are individual driven. So they're never going to be able to do these live streams like we do and stuff like that. Uh, they would have to, can you imagine, Pamela, they'd have to pay people. Oh, yeah. They'd have to pay people to live stream like this. <laughs> That'd be so funny. Can you imagine negotiating with like Marvel? Like, uh, yeah, we'll give you X percentage if you live stream your book. And then can you imagine the insincerity? Because, you know, they don't, they probably don't care. A lot of those guys, it's just a paycheck to them. Uh, wait a minute. I got to read this because it just seems off the wall. Have you heard the new Ozzy record or seen the video of how Sharon got Ozzy out of a death spiral to start a solo career with Val Kilmer's son playing younger Ozzy? Ooh, is this, can you, is this on YouTube? I should check this out. Yeah, I, I think, I think some people are just self-destructive and if you can get, if they can have somebody in their lives, like if, like a Sharon Osbourne that can steer those guys, then all that destructive energy then becomes creative energy. Um, and Val Kilmer's son is... I, I heard something about this, and I, I heard that Val Kilmer's son is actually turning into a good actor. Well, his father is a phenomenal actor. Yeah, his father is a phenomenal actor. I mean, I, when he played Jim Morrison. He was a better Jim Morrison than Jim Morrison was. Yes, he was. Yeah, that movie, I don't, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to watch. Yeah, it is. They got like one of the most likable actresses. Was it Meg Ryan that played his girlfriend? Yeah. And he locks her in the closet and then sets so fire sad. to the closet. It's like, how could you do that to Meg Ryan? <laughs> like, I can't, tra I cannot, like, disconnect. Like, that's Meg Ryan in that closet. Um, and we won't get into her lips and all that stuff. Val Kilmer is awesome talent who maybe doesn't get the props he deserves. I agree. I agree. I heard that he's a little, or he was in the day, a little bit of an a-hole. So being but most it, of them are. Yeah, being an a-hole sometimes uh, you don't get a lot of praise. Uh, hell suicidal tendencies. <laughs> I like the band. I don't know what that's in relationship to. Uh, Pam and Jim die too young. Yeah. <laughs> and look at look at his uh, <laughs> his icon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, very, very good. All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much, man. Uh, once again. Oh, yes, I'm laughing. At, you want you want me to read that? I don't. I was just trying to figure out what it he's is. he's referring to to Vinny Art. Yes, oh. I am. I am laughing. It was a great surprise as well as hilarious. That was a generous thing you did for all your or the backers. I don't. Yeah, I don't know what this is. Surprise gift. We're talking about a surprise gift. Did Vinny give something away? Yeah, I haven't been following the chat as closely as I should. But uh, but very cool. So, um, <laughs> hell Dio, you guys are all over the place. Yeah, hell Dio, man. I, I love Dio. My brother bought me tickets to Dio in the day. Uh, for my birthday. Angela says, oops, I'm a she. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look at her. <laughs> uh, yeah, if I... Can't you tell that was a girl skeleton? Yeah, and if I actually took time to read the name, I probably would have figured that out as well. Mm -hmm. Angela, I apologize. Okay, <laughs> I'm giddy. I'm giddy with guitar pick, Joy. Look at that. Lucky pick. Not the pick of destiny, the lucky pick. You will get to see the originator, the emancipator, uh, the rock and roll originator, uh, which is Doug. What's his full name? Doug, Zachariah. Douglas. Oh, my goodness. There's like six names. Douglas, Zachariah, uh, Kisner. Kisner is in there. A lot of my family names. 
Uh, but yeah, he has like six names. Yeah, we wanted to get that in the story, but I'll tell you right now, it would fill an entire balloon, like his full name. It is in the pitch Bible, though. Uh, oh, yes. Yes, Angela. Hell Rainbow and Blackmore. I'll tell you, that is an underrated guitar player. If you look at the just the, the licks, just the freaking tasty licks that that guy came up with, iconic, iconic. I think he's also one of those guys that's a little bit of an a-hole, so people don't like to uh, speak highly of him. But you still can't take away what that guy did. Uh, and if you don't know, Pamela, you know about um, Deep Purple, right, in the day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's he's the smoke on the water guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's... that's he always has to clarify because he knows that there's only one person that I could that I adore when it comes to music, and that's Roy Orbison. Yeah, Roy Orbison. I, Roy Orbison kicks ass. Man. I know all the songs. I mean, I just love Orbison. Yeah, only the lonely. Yeah, uh, yeah, very very cool. Yeah, I think there's a couple documentaries out on Blackmore that I watched. Very, very cool, man. I mean, the guy is definitely a prima donna. He's got a bit of a temper. Um, there's a story that he, God, what was it? He set fire, like, to a stage. Like, <laughs> he was, like, told something. He couldn't do something. He had to turn his guitar down or something like that. So he had, like, some explosives. Like, I, I don't know. They were, like, dynamite or something. And he actually blew up part of the stage. And oh, then... Um, he was the cops came because you can't do that. So they hid him like his his roadies, his tech guys hid him in a box like one of their like, uh, you know, instrument boxes or whatever they call those things. Anvil cases. And they tried to get him out and they tried to get him through customs and on the air airplane before he got busted. But they caught him. <laughs> those are cool rock stories, man. Yes. Hal Orbison. Yes. Yes, yes. That man could hit high notes and do low all in one breath. I'll tell awesome. you, the Mystery Girl album, that dude went out with his freaking boots on, man. That Mystery Girl album is phenomenal. And then the stuff he did with the Wilburys, and I think he put out something else around that time. He did that that duet with Katie Lang. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm not a big Katie Lang fan, but it was brilliant. It was brilliant. Um, Roy Orbison did that. What? No, Orbison didn't blow up the stage. That was Richie Blackmore. <laughs> Jeez, pay attention, Vinny Art. What the hell? Travel cases, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so we're going on a Blackmore tangent. Uh, without Blackmore, there would be no Ingve. Without Blackmore, there would be no Ronnie James Dio. Uh, I think Dio still would have succeeded, but um, but it, they definitely wrote some great stuff together. Um, okay, yeah, we should <laughs> we should put an end to this stream. I got work to do. All right, you guys. So once again, man, thank you so much for getting us to these stretch goals. You guys are going to get buttons. You're going to get all these cool guitar picks. It's raining guitar picks again. Um, here you go. Um, you know, we should try to do, we should maybe sell like some of the guitar picks separately, like a guitar pick pack. So if there's any guitar players out there, yeah. they could actually buy a bunch of these and use them um, because you go through them so quickly. Um, Along with the air gu uh, guitar strings. Oh, we should say. <laughs> you want to say it? Go for it. I forgot all about this. Um, we were going to do air guitar strings as a stretch goal. So what we were going to do is we were just going to get a plastic bag, get a piece of cardboard like that that we would fold, and that would be printed on it like Chrono Mechanics or like Doug, you know, Rock God um, air guitar strings. And then we're going to staple that on the bag. And it's kind of like Guitar Center where you see the, the guitar, you know, strings rolled up in the bag and then they have the cardboard thing and then they put it on the racks or whatever. Um, we were going to do that, but they were going to be air guitar strings, meaning there weren't going to be any guitar strings in the bag. <laughs> we 
you weren't sure people would, would get the... Yeah, our sense of humor is a little warped. Yeah, we were going to do... I forgot all about that. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, the, uh, the air guitar strings. So uh, maybe we'll still... Excuse me, we'll do that in the future if you guys want. Um, oh, wait a minute. Orbison did a duet with Bonnie Raitt? We got to check that out. You guys are awesome. I like Bonnie Raitt, too. She She's like the real deal, man. Um, Dio talks a, about Blackmore. Um, yeah, there's, there's definitely a love-hate there between those two guys. Um, Bonnie... Yeah, I mean, she's the real deal um, with uh, uh, John Lee Hooker. Um, great name, Hooker. Uh, I want some round wound air bass strings. <laughs> Dude, those things. Uh, oh, I used to know all the names. I used to play in a band. I forgot the name of those strings. Yeah, those things. Uh, there's these strings. I forget what they're called. They sound so cool on a bass. They're more like uh, I guess they're they're more like um, they're higher pitched, so you can um, instead of that real bass sound, it's more higher pitched, kind of like a uh, a what you consider a Rickenbacker sound. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. I'm showing my my old rock and roll ignorance. Uh, seven internet points plus seven internet points. I don't know what that means. Roto sound. Thank you. Oh my gosh, you guys are on it. You guys are the best. I wish I had you through my entire existence so I could just go, what was the name of that? And then somebody go, somebody like Watchman, uh, Watchman would say, uh, yeah, a uh, rubber sound. <laughs> okay, Angela, don't leave us hanging art. What are, are they? What are they what? What is uh, she referring to? I forget. I say so much stupid stuff. I forget what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, now you now you, you can't leave me hanging here, uh, Angela. You have to let me know what you're talking about. Oh, is that? Oh, the roto sound. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah, those things sound really cool. I had a, a bass player once. He didn't have a Rickenbacker, but he had. I think it was. Uh, he had uh, a Sherman Sherwin Vega. Just massive amp, and then he had um, a Galleon Kruger brain, or they used to call them brains or heads. And that thing, if you if you played with it, you could it could sound just like a full on Rickenbacker. He had like a small Fender Fender Jazz or something like that, and he could get that thing to sound just like a, like a Rickenbacker. Cold Steel. Cold Steel. Remember Cold Steel. They froze the strings and something happened. I don't know. Cold steel. I don't know what that is. Freezing the strings? That, that, I wonder what that sounds like. That could be cool. Oh, Roto Toms. I had Roto Toms in the 80s. Yeah, those things are fun. Roy and Bonnie. Um, Roy and Bonnie did a whole show together. It was on PBS. Oh, you guys, I got invited to go on PBS to do a show on comic books and to highlight some of my creator-owned comic books. A little-known fact, um, we were invited to do a pitch for PBS, for Chrono Mechanics. So uh, we could still do a comic book, like a younger kid comic Mm -hmm. And use those ideas. So uh, we put a pitch together. And Chrono Kids. Chrono Kids. And we went and pitched that to PBS. So I still do have some connections at PBS. So uh, program director asked if I would do, if I'd come on and talk about um, IPs, creator own, and just my comic career. And I said yes, but then the pandemic hit and everything was put on the back burner. So... He still wants to do it. I'll let you guys know when I go on PBS and talk about, about these things. Okay. Oh, Dean Markley. Dean Markley does a cryogenic frozen strings, good strings. I have love for old school Dean Markley. Uh, that's just industry standard stuff right there. Yes. There's so many musicians in the chat. It's funny how many musicians are artists and vice versa. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, all right. Well, this time when I say I'm going to wrap it up, I mean it. I'm going to wrap it up. 
Oh no, you guys are still talking, <laughs> talk, talking rock and roll, man. I don't get to talk rock and roll enough. Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'll do it. Yes, yes. Uh, good strings. All right, you guys, take care. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for showing up and hanging out with us, letting us show off some of these killer, killer stretch goal items. We have a box of these. Uh, we couldn't bring it up because these are a little bit bigger than guitar picks. Uh, but this is this place is going to start looking like a, uh, a stock room soon, like a warehouse again. Uh, we got rid of a lot of the black and white stuff in fulfillment. So we still it still is a little warehouse, but um, it's going to be nothing compared to Chrono, the Chrono warehouse coming. All right, you guys. Take care, man. Thank you so much. Had a blast. You guys are the best. Thank you for listening.